Hello and welcome to Mr. Conley's Math. We've got Lesson 6.1.1 today, Part 1, Problem 6.5 to 6.9. We're starting a new chapter. We're starting a new semester. And in doing so, we've got a new video. Look at this. I'm inside the video. Okay, you can see me now. All right, so for today, what we're going to do is, first, we're going to like and subscribe to this channel so you can get information about future videos. And your homework, make sure it goes in the bottom right-hand corner. It looks like it right there. Also, expectations, title your paper, homework, write the number of the problems in the focus notes margin, show your work, box your answer, write in a complete sentence, use the back of the paper if you need more room. As always, this is very important. Make sure you listen up. Guidelines for using the video effectively are watch and listen to the video. Sound should be on. Do not skip ahead. Do not just mindlessly copy the work. Pause the video when you need time to write or think. Put a question mark next to the problem you don't understand. Rewatch and listen to the video when needed and ask questions in class or in the comments below. All right, let's get started. Ooh, don't need that. Yeah, all right. It's question 6-5. If you had two pieces of licorice to share equally among three people, how much licorice would each person get? Show your thinking clearly. Okay, so we've got two pieces of licorice. And we've got three people. Can't give each person one licorice because one person would be like, hey, I didn't get any down here. Okay, we know that. So let's think of a different way. Obviously, we look at the piece. We think, hmm, maybe we should cut this up. All right, how much should we cut it? Well, there's three people, so let's make uh, three pieces. So three equal pieces, we'll cut it about there and there. That's a little off, but you get the idea. Okay, so then what? each person gets a piece. So you get this piece right here, you get this piece right there, and you get this piece right there. Each of them gets exactly one-third of the licorice. Ah, but there's another piece. We can always just cut it again. And then give one to each person. And last person, you get this piece. So we've got one third and one third and one third. So each person gets one third plus one third. And you get one third plus one third and you get one third. Okay, so we add those all together. And we get what? We get a little squiggly mark I don't like. Okay, we each get two-thirds. So each person is going to get two-thirds. All right, pause if you need more time. All right, let's move on. 6-6, six six, calculate each of the following parts of parts. So we've got two-thirds of three-sevenths. Okay, we know that of means times. So let's just change that to multiplication. And remember, when we're multiplying fractions, you multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. So let's multiply the numerators first. 2 times 3, I hope you know what that is. I'll give you a hint, it's 6. And then on the bottom part, we've got 3 times 7, which is going to be a number. Hopefully you know what that is. If not, use a calculator and put that in there. And you'll have your answer. All right, next, B. We've got 1 sixth of 11 twelfths. Okay, same thing. Of means times, so we're going to do 1 times 11 on the top, so that would be a number. And then on the bottom, we've got 6 and 12, and multiply those together. So 6 times 12, if you don't know it off the top of your head, you can always just write off to the side. 12 times 6, okay, 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 72. Go ahead and put that in the bottom over there, and you'll have your final answer. All right, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, let's move on. Okay, 6-7, simplify each numerical expression. We've got 5 minus 6 plus 1. Okay, so for this one, let's think about this for a second. Uh, we start at 5, so let's imagine that we're at the 0 here, and... We're just taking a couple jumps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then doing that, so one, two, three, four. So you get the idea. We jump forward like Mr. Crokey. Okay, and now it says minus six. So now we go backwards six. So one, two, three, four, five. But 
One more would be six backwards, and that would end us up at, well, if we go past zero to the left, it's going to be negative one. Okay, so five minus six is negative one. The next thing it wants us to do is to add one. Okay, so the absolute value of negative one plus one just means now we go forward one jump. So we go forward one jump, and we end back up at zero. Okay, so the answer will be the absolute value of zero. And what's the absolute value of zero? Well, zero is neither positive nor negative, so the answer is just going to be zero. Make sure you take the absolute value signs away, because that's the point of it, and we get zero. Okay, for B, we've got the absolute value, that's what these little symbols mean, right? Of negative 16.75, the absolute value we know is how far away it is from zero. Well, this is 16 and three quarters steps backwards from zero. If we take those steps backwards, we're going to end up at uh, going 16 and three fourths. So its answer is just going to be a positive 16.75 or 16 and three fourths. So put that number in there. Don't have the absolute value symbols. Just put the number and take away the negative sign. Okay, for C, 6 and 3 eighths minus 2 plus negative 8 and 5 eighths plus 1. Those sneaky t <laughs> homework writers are here. We've got 6 and 3 eighths minus 2. This is going to be a little bit harder. Let's do this off to the side over here. So 6 and 3 eighths and minus 2. And we want the absolute value of that. Let's do that first, and then we'll do the second one. This is saying I have 6 and 3 eighths. Uh, forward, and then it wants to take two steps back, so that's going to be, let's just use 6 and 3 eighths, and subtract it from 2. We'll do the big numbers first and the fractions next. 3 eighths minus nothing would be 3 eighths, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So 4 and 3 eighths, so this is 4 and 3 eighths. And we're going to add that to negative 8 and 5 eighths plus negative 1. Okay, so we've got the absolute value of negative 8 and 5 eighths plus negative 1. Okay, oh yeah, this has the absolute value symbols. But we know if it's positive, it stays positive, so it's going to be 4 and 3 eighths. Make sure you include this step where you take away the absolute value symbols. Okay, so negative 8 and 5 eighths plus negative 1. So we've got the negative 8 and 5 eighths. We'll do it separate. And the negative 1. We're going to be adding those together. A negative 8 plus another negative 1 is like taking 8 steps back and then another 1 step. So we're still going to be at negative 9 and 5 eighths. Just 5 eighths plus nothing is 5 eighths. Okay, so we've got the absolute value of negative 9 and 5 eighths. And that just means it's going to be positive 9 and 5 eighths. Okay, we're on the home stretch. We add those together. And look at that. We've got a common denominator already. It's 8. So. We can add the big, I'll line them up. I like to line them up this way. 4 and 3 eighths and five, 9 and 5 eighths. Let's add the big numbers first. 9 plus 4 is going to be uh, 13. Put that in there. And 3 eighths plus 5 eighths, you'll add those together. 3 plus uh, 5 is going to be 8 over 8. And we also know that 8 over 8 is the same as 1 whole. So it's going to be our answer is going to be whatever this number was, 9 and 4, plus 8 over 8 to get our final grand answer right there. So go ahead and add up all those numbers and see what you get. And we'll check it tomorrow. All right, pause if you need more time. Okay, let's move on. Oh, question. Yeah, okay. Question 6 8. Find the area of each of these trapezoids. Show your steps. 
Okay, so remember in class we did a bunch of different ways of cutting up these trapezoids. Uh, one of them that stuck out a lot was when we cut it right in half and then we flipped it over and put it right next to it so it was going this way. And in doing that we noticed that the 12 skipped around to the bottom and this length became 16 plus 12 and the height instead of it being 5 it was half of that so it actually became 2.5. And then we just multiplied 2.5 times 16 plus 12. <coughs> and it was just like um, a parallelogram. And in doing that, we were able to find the area. So let's do that again uh, using that formula that we uh, used before. We know that the area is going to be 1 half the height times base 1 plus base 2, mm. or we could say A plus B, either way. And so the area of this one is going to be 1 half of 5, which is where we got that 2.5, because we cut it in half. And then the two bases we added were 12 and 16. Notice that this 5.4 is on here. That's just to distract you. It's telling you this length right here. We don't need that length. We just need the base times the height. In this case, there just happens to be two bases because we cut it in half and flipped it over. So don't use the 5.4. And then it's just 12 plus 16. So you'll add those together and multiply. We said 1 half of 5 is 2.5. And then 12 plus 16 is going to be 20, 28. So the area, almost done, is going to be 2.5 times 28. Go ahead and put that in there when you're done. All right, B, same thing. Let's imagine again that we cut it in half. So we want half of this length right here, half of 4. So the area is going to equal 1 half times 4. And then when we cut it in half, then we just flip it over and put it right here. So now since we flipped it over, the 12 goes down here. It's going to be 12 plus 5 along the bottom. So we'll just multiply 12.5 times half of 4, which would be 2. So 12 plus, 12 plus 5 times 4 times 1 half. So half of 4 is 2. 12 plus 5 is a number. Multiply those together. And hopefully you're listening and not just fast forwarding through and doing it like you're supposed to. And you'll be able to learn and do this on your own. Okay, I'm, I'm here to help. All right, next. 6-9, consider the generic rectangle shown at right. Copy and complete the generic rectangle. Write as many products. As you can see in the rectangle, and find at least four. For each one, show the factors being multiplied as well as the product. Okay, so remember, the products are answers to multiplication uh, problems, and factors are the numbers that you multiply to get an answer. Okay, so this one, we've got a product. We've got 800. How do we get 800? We're going to take 20 and multiply it by another factor to get 800. So to do that, let's work backwards. We've got 800, and let's divide it by 20. So 20 goes into 80, 8, 0 times, and then 80, 4 times. So 4 times 0, 0. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract that, we get 0. Bring down the 0 again. Up, oh, 20 doesn't go into 0, so it's 0 times. The answer would be 40. So we put 40 over here. So there's our first product, 800, and the two factors, 40 and 20. So it says write as many products as you can, find at least four for each one, show the factors. So we'll start with the factors. We'll say 40 times 20 goes here, and that's going to give us 800 
plus. Let's find another set of factors. Up oh, over here we've got, excuse me, 18. So 6 goes into 18 how many times? We know that's 3. So this is going to be 6 times 3, which gives us 18. So 6 times 3 is actually 18. So 800 plus 18 is what we've got so far. And now let's look at the next one. It's going to be what goes inside here. Well, it's going to be 6 times 20. So go ahead and do that off to the side. Show your computation off to the side. 20 times 6. That number will go right here. And then next we've got 40 times 3. That will give you a number inside here. Okay, 40 times 3. And then... All right. Once you get that answer, you'll put it here. And finally, you'll add them all up for the grand answer. It'll go right in there. All right, pause if you need more time. Okay, let's move on. Actually, we don't need to move on any farther. I want to thank you for watching through the whole video. Hopefully, you listened to it and got some information that you needed uh, to help you. Remember, I'm here to help uh, anything that you need. And now, I just want to congratulate you. Congratulations on completing your homework assignment. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to Mr. Conley's Math to get updates on future videos. Thanks for watching.